Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting, connecting new money with old money since 2018. Cake Wallet and Sweetwater Digital are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Kevin Watt, a Monero community member who recently published a detailed Reddit post on Monero's liquidity. The two discuss what led Kevin to Monero, Monero's liquidity crisis, and his take on what allegedly caused the issue, what can be done to prevent this problem, the real demand for Monero and the challenges of obtaining the coin itself, and the effects decentralized exchanges such as atomic swaps have on the liquidity and price of Monero. Monero Talk starts now. All right. Hi. Kevin, thanks for coming on, man. Yes, nice to, nice to meet you. Where are, where are you located, if you don't mind telling us? You don't have to, but if you don't mind. Paris, Paris. Yeah. Paris, okay. Yeah. Awesome. My uh, actually, my my daughter, my seven year old daughter, was over yeah. there for a few days on her way to Poland. Okay. With her mother, she that was her request. She wanted to go to she wanted to go to Paris. She wanted to see the Eiffel Tower, which I thought was pretty yeah. heavy, heavy request for a, a seven. Yeah, pretty, pretty pretty cool destination. <laughs> <laughs> How just is a, it over there right now? Yeah, just a question because I'm trying to look at you, but uh, do I have to? Uh, do I have to look at the, the camera here or right here? Uh, you mean so we make eye contact? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't know if uh, we'll try it's I guess lower for me. Try to look right into the camera, right? Right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay great. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't do a good job at that, so. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, how is Paris, man? What's, the, uh, what's it like these days? I saw that there's some protests going on, right? Yeah, because of the coronavirus, um, so situation is, um, I mean, pretty tense right now. Uh, but hopefully, uh, people will uh, start to, you know, um, get along with this, and we will be able to go through this. You know, this is, I think this is complicated time for a lot of people, mm -hmm. and uh, so there is a lot of tensions, and there were riots effectively. But uh, yeah, I hope eventually everybody will be happy, and we will. Uh, <laughs> Uh, forget this period. I hope so, right? I feel things yeah. feel very tumultuous, obviously, s since 2020. And I don't know. I think I think it's going to take some time. I think there there just seems to be the next thing, the next the next event. You know, I I, I don't know. It just feels like we're we're in a transition period overall on on a global scale. You know, it's not so much about COVID or. It's just yeah. we're tra we're transitioning, you know. We're we're yeah. moving into this uh, digital age. Exactly. Um, exactly. Obviously, I, Monero is is playing a big part in this transition. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I guess guys exactly. like us are on the forefront of that. So, how how did you become? A, are you a Monero strictly a Monero person, or what's your what's your crypto story before we get into? Yeah. Why? So yeah. Today? <laughs> so for me, everything started uh, back in 2013 late 2013 beginning of 2014 so at the beginning i was involved into bitcoin and only bitcoin mm -hmm. and uh, i used to follow my skyzer i watched all his videos all the time and so yeah i was extremely involved in uh, bitcoin and then there were uh, ethereum in 2015 and i was I, i'm a developer so i was uh, among the first developers in france uh, to I tried the Ethereum blockchain, and uh, at that time, I was more involved uh, into the technical point of view uh, rather than the investment point of view. Mm -hmm. And then I pretty much started to not take care uh, about Ethereum, and I was uh, um, focused on Bitcoin. And uh, lately, 
I mean, it's not lately. It's uh, since 2018, I've identified Monero. And now I'm more and more involved in Monero. And uh, I, I would not call myself a Monero maximalist, but it's like I'm <laughs> a Monero maximalist. I'm, yeah, uh, Monero is extremely, I think uh, it's, it's, this technology is just um, mind blowing. And uh, I, I think what is coming from Monero is it will, it will shock the world. You know, it, we were all going to shock the world uh, world. And I, I don't think a lot of people are prepared for what is coming, you know, because the technology, uh, the community, uh, what is going on. Um, I mean, all the people involved in Monero, I feel like they are good people. Uh, Monero at which is going an extremely good job uh, to spread the world. Uh, what is coming with the decentralized exchange as well, I think. I mean, everybody and you, I think <laughs> you're like the mass case of uh, Monero. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if I want to be compared to that guy. You, you see no, my, but, my I mean, Bitcoin conference? Yeah, yeah. I, I know Max. I know Max Kaiser, he, you know, he has two sides, you know, because, uh, yeah, I know at the beginning I saw he, he made the Max coin and all this stuff like this. Yeah. But overall, I think uh, he, he spread the world as well. And uh, a lot of people discovered Bitcoin through Max. So I, I think it's a pretty good, I mean, it's not... Uh, but uh, no, see this is a compliment. I'm yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would love to. Yeah. He's he's amazing. What he's done. Uh, yeah, he went off the rails a little bit, but that you know that that's his uh, that's his shtick. You know, that's what that's what he does. And I he yeah. he's very entertaining, extremely intelligent guy, and he's a a forward thinking guy. He's he was obviously ahead of his time. Um, you know, kind of the, one of the first people to get it out, get crypto out to the mainstream. Yeah. Um. So you said you, you found Monero, I think you'd say 20, like around 2018 is when you yes, started. Yes, I think so it when was. When you, a... you found it, it was like, like were you, was it because of its privacy properties or what, what led you to Monero? Why? And, and honestly, why? honestly uh, I don't exactly remember how I, I found it. Um, I think I was in a phase where I was discovering blockchain. I mean, I started very soon. But there were still a lot of projects because it wasn't the same ecosystem. So even Ethereum was a new technology and we were talking about a lot of new terms and I was learning, learning. And so uh, when I uh, was today studying all the projects, uh, when I came across Monero, I immediately saw that uh, there was something special about uh, this project. And uh, since then I've been uh, yeah, digging deeper and deeper into what uh, is Monero. And um, now I think I have a pretty um, accurate vision of this technology and the potential, I think, of this technology. Yeah. So I, I brought you on because of a Reddit post. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've been posting a lot on Reddit, but this one particular one where you're talking about Monero's liquidity. And yeah. It's kind of explaining liquidity. And I thought you did it in a very, uh, you know, eloquent way. Um, so I want to bring you on because I think it's a big it's a big topic, you know. So I don't know how how much you actually know in terms of stats and things like that, but I think uh, you obviously understand the issue. Yes. Um, so so let's let's talk about it. I mean, often when you talk to people about Monero, especially BTC maxis, uh, one of the major criticisms that comes about is, well, you know, Bitcoin has the network effect, and Monero, uh, you know, it it. It doesn't have the liquidity, so it's not even useful. Um, and so it does seem to be one of Monero's biggest hurdles right now, which is uh, obtaining uh, the proper liquidity. So people, so you know, the the demand can be can be met for Monero, so it can be used in the way people mm. want to use it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just let's just go into that. Um, yes, exactly. What is your uh, take on Monero's liquidity? Yeah, I think the, there's a lot to say. But just a question, when you say uh, there was a problem with Monero liquidity, what, what do you mean? Uh, the liquidity on exchanges? Is this uh, this li liquidity you're talking about? I guess just overall, you know, it's not as liquid as a market as Bitcoin is, right? So um, it's it's harder to obtain Monero. Okay. Um, and it's, I guess, conceivably harder to uh, sell Monero, right? At any moment in time. 
uh because there's you know it's it's not it's not as liquid so on, okay. on the exchanges uh just overall in the marketplace yeah i just wanted this precision so i think uh if some people are saying that there's a problem of uh, liquidity with monero um and it's bad for monero uh, i don't think i don't see in what extent it can be bad for monero and let me explain why because the problem of liquidity we're seeing right now is not because of Monero is ubiquitous, but is the contrary. You know, we are suffering from the scarcity of Monero. Uh, I think what has happened is um, some exchanges so that uh, this uh, token, this uh, is extremely uh, specific because it's private. All right. And they thought since it's private, let's act like uh, this is unlimited. You know, so they in the back uh, in behind the scenes they have established a system like if uh, money was unlimited and they have been involved in selling paper xml so the liquidity issue we are suffering right now is a liquidity issue but it's not um i, I think it's extremely if i can use the term uh, bullish for monero because um they are suppressing the price of monero and they have been acting like this um, token was unlimited Although it's extremely scarce, uh, it's more scarce than Bitcoin. It's going to be, there are going to be less Monero than Bitcoin uh, until 2040. So I, I, my, my, from my analysis of the situation, what's going on behind the scenes, um, I think um, if I can name uh, the exchange, uh, I think Binance has been involved in an extremely um, dangerous uh, game. And now they are discovering uh, that Monero is extremely scarce. And they are, at their own extent, I think they are going to suffer from this. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is happening behind the scenes? It's like you said, so let's get, let's get into that more. Yeah. I, I don't know what actual data or facts we have. Um, okay. any, you know, let, let, let's get into that a little bit more. I mean, you're basically saying that you think there's exchanges that uh, don't actually have as many Monero as they uh, claim to have. Exactly. Uh, and they're just creating paper Monero. So allow mm -hmm. essentially uh, allowing people to, to buy Monero when they're not, when they don't really have the Monero to sell it. Yes, exactly. Um, but do we, do we have any yeah. actual? Do we know that that's that's true? I mean, I know we, we had that that issue uh, that we saw a few months ago now that seemed to be indicative of that fact. Um, when Change Now had their liquidity crisis, um, but do you do you have any f insight into into the problem further? Do you have any 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 facts or data that we could talk about that might elucidate some of that? Yeah, I have some. I mean. We know the nature of Monero, all right? This, this is a private cryptocurrency. So as a private crypt cryptocurrency, the exchanges, we cannot know exactly the amount they do have, but we've got some data, all right? We've got, for instance, we can see um, if there is, you know, there is the 24 hour um, volume on the exchange. There is also the order book. So we can see the, the correlation between these numbers do make sense or not. And I will show you that it doesn't make sense. Moreover, as you said, uh, and I think this is more than an evidence, uh, they had to stop withdrawals for more than a week. So basically the situation started in um, May 16 of this year. And uh, for a week, it was impossible to withdraw Monero from uh, Binance. And they said it was to a problem of uh, network congestion. But uh, the core team, which them, asked them if uh, they needed help. Uh, in the Monero community, nobody knows about this uh, error because it doesn't exist. So Binance has been pretending and alleging that there was uh, an issue with the network, but it, there was no issue with the network. And I will, I will, so we do not know exactly how much Monero they do have, but we've, there are some clues beyond this fact that again they stopped withdrawals for more than a week so this is more than an evidence for me but beyond that we do have some other facts and i consider these other facts like additional clues but we cannot have uh, an evidence because 
by the nature of Monero, unfortunately, we cannot say, uh, um, we cannot prove them with uh, actual, I mean, we do, we, the only thing we do, we can have is clues, but we cannot, you know, say 100%, even if I think the world communities know that 100% they do have paper XML, but this is what um, the, the clues we have. So, um, do you want me to to talk about the clues right now, or do you want to react to this? Or no, no, no keep keep going. Yeah. Let's, okay. Let's so, see. for instance, for instance, so what we what we we would expect, you know, it was included in my uh, in my post. Yeah. At this time, you know, we were beyond just um, um, uh, the. I mean, we we're beyond just you know the idea, the potential idea that they were involved into a liquidity crisis with paper XML. At this point, we were pretty sure that they were selling uh, paper XML. So in this post, I uh, also warned the uh, mining community that uh, Binance might come at them and try to to get uh, their their monies because I, what I'm pretty sure right now is that Binance at this moment had no XML in their results. I'm pretty sure that it's not just they had few XML; they were had they had no XML. So for them. They had to really, they had to, to find any source of XML I knew they were going to, to go through it and to, to, to try to catch it, you know. So the mining forms, I, I think, um, I mean, the mining pools uh, were a target uh, that we identified directly and we warned the mining forms, uh, the mining pools. So I also posted on um, for to warn the mining pools and um, what happened is that Nice, nice Ash, uh, which is uh, a big mining pool for Monero, uh, they stopped withdrawals. Exactly, they started to stop withdrawals exactly at the moment of this crisis, and they stopped for 34 days. So for 34 days, it was impossible to retrieve Monero from Nas Ash, and as well another uh, mining pool, which is Mana Gate. So two mining pools that had no. It never happened to, to that extent uh, in these mining pools. And exactly at this moment, as predicted, um, there was these problems for retrieving a Monero from these uh, mining pools. So this is one um, other clue, you know, beyond the fact, again, that they stopped withdrawals for more than a week. Mm -hmm. Then there is also, you know, so Binance is an exchange and they have their own token, which is uh, the BNB token. So what we would expect as well is that if they truly had a problem with Monero, is that they would use their BNB, which is a token that they, 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 they have completely control over and they have a lot of BNB, right? So what we would expect is that they would sell their BNB for Monero, mm -hmm. right? And guess what? Anybody who can now go on Binance, all right, and look the short of Monero Binance, uh, Monero BNB, XML BNB chart. All right. What happened is that um, there was a gigantic spike of volume. All right, in this uh, in this uh, in this market, XML BNB, and so the the volume used to be you know in normal it was between uh, two two hundred to one thousand to two thousand. Uh, XML per day on the daily chart. But what happened is that uh, 20, in the middle of the crisis, so 21 May uh, of this year, all right, there was a gigantic spike and the volume reached 22,000 Monero, all right? So this was a gigantic spike of volume. And it, it, when we look the chart, we see an incredible spike, like, <laughs> I mean, this is this is gigantic, and the price of uh, it was not sell pressure on Monero, but they, they were buying uh, XMO with BNB. So the price of um, the price of Monero went from zero dot five um, uh, to zero dot nine. All right, uh, it reached zero dot nine uh, May twenty third. Twenty third. So yes, they use their BNB to buy Monero, you know, and this was again expected. And then another, 
another clue that we do have is uh, the, um, the ratio, again, between the 24-hour volume and the order book. Uh, this was uh, posted by another user, and his idea was, OK, we cannot assess. We cannot see exactly how much money was they do have. But let's see if there is some, you know, if, if it makes sense, uh, the data that do uh, share. Let's see if we can analyze it, and let's see if it makes sense. And let's compare this data with another exchange like Kraken, because we are pretty much sure that uh, the Kraken exchange is fully reserved. If I mean, if not fully reserved, I mean, their reserves are um, pretty much, um, their the reserves, I think, Kraken, because they are trying to get um, really integrated into the banking system and all that. They're not playing behind the scenes against the interest of the Monero community. I, I, will, I will think they're much more transparent. And yeah, so Kraken is the exchange to go if someone wants to buy Monero. Mm -hmm. And uh, Binance is definitely to avoid. So uh, if we take the 24-hour volume, all right, and we compare this to the order book. So the 24-hour volume on Kraken is 11,000 Moneros. The order book is 47,000 Moneros, all right? Now, let's see what is going on with Binance. Binance, the 24-hour volume, we're, we're all only talking about the sports market, not the, mod, not the future market, only the sport market. So for, for, for Binance, the 24-hour volume is 154,000 Moneros. So with the same ratio, if, if Binance has the same ratio as Kraken, we would expect that the older book, it means the Monero that are ready to be sold on Binance, we will expect that this older book would be 658,000 Moneros. Mm -hmm. But guess what? This older book is not 658,000 Moneros. This older book is 14,000 Moneros. So, you see that there is a huge discrepancy between what we would expect and what is actually on their order book. So, yeah, we do not have evidence because, again, the Monero blockchain is private. But we do have some clues when we see at the data that they share. And unfortunately, I think, yeah, Binance is involved into something very shady. and. Uh, the Monero community has been the victim of uh, their actions. And beyond Binance, I think it's other also exchanges that are involved. I think for my analysis, there are maybe three exchanges. It's Binance, it's Bitfinex, and it's Poloniex. Mm -hmm. And all these exchanges, you see that their price goes uh, because at the end of the crisis, we saw... Um, uh, the price from Kraken and Binance to decouple. So it was very, very, um, I mean, at, at one moment, there was a difference of 20 to 25%. So it's a huge difference. And the price in um, Binance, Polynex, and um, Bitfinex, this price was down much lower, although on Kraken, it was much higher. So yeah, this is a pretty much the situation right now. Yeah, good, good for you, man, for uh, really trying to follow follow the trail here, um, which with Monero is difficult because there really isn't much of a trail. Do you think, so are we seeing this with other coins as well, or is it really Monero? Obviously, you're a Monero person, so you're really focusing on Monero, but do we think this is happening with other cryptos as well on these exchanges? Um I think Monero is very specific because again, it's private. So we do not have any clue. We cannot see how much they do have on their reserves. So they have used- If this was happening with say Bitcoin, it would be a lot harder to hide this, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. And due to that um, nature of Monero, I think the Monero community truly have to um, take this um, seriously because I, I truly think that this is this is a battle right now for Monero. Uh, we I think the Monero community should put all its resources and all its uh, intelligence to 
to fight these uh, actions because the battle of the price is the first battle, but it, uh, it is an important battle. Um, and right now, uh, people from Binance and other exchanges are acting like uh, if uh, Monero belonged to them. And they, they I, I, yeah, I, I truly think that um, we have, we have to, to do something about it. I don't think it happened uh, for another token. Uh, I, I never heard about another token that had such a liquidity crisis and issue and withdrawal will stop for more than a week, you know. It, it just shows that uh, Monero is extremely scarce. Again, it's more scarce than Bitcoin, so um, yeah. And, and this, uh, this would begin to explain the disconnect between what appears to be like real demand and usage uh, for the coin versus the price that's reflected in the market, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Because, uh, you know, Alfine, um, when he started one of the first users of Bitcoin, when he started to use Bitcoin, the first issue he talked about was anonymity, right? So Monero is a response to that. It is a perfect response to that. So the place of Monero in the crypto industry should be extremely higher than what it is right now. And we're in a situation where all the altcoins are skyrocketing or, or at least two to three times uh, higher than their previous all-time high. Although Monero, it is not even half of its previous all-time high. And when you compare this with the fact that Monero is, um, yeah, it is the, mon the money of the darknet, there is a real demand of Monero on the market from its usage, the transactions have been increasing uh, through the last month and years. All the metrics when it comes to the fundamentals are extremely positive, but the price is extremely bad. You know, I, I, we have to talk about it. I think the current price of Monero is not the reflection of its value and it is not a reflection of what it should be, you know. And the Monero community, again, should use all its intelligence because I know there are a lot of intelligent people in the Monero community to analyze what is going on behind the scenes and to respond. Maybe we have to create a team to deal with this and to make sure that exchanges do not you know, play against the interests of the Monero people behind the scenes. But I don't think we can afford to ignore this situation anymore and it's time to respond to them. Yeah, no. and that I, I love that you're you're taking action here, man. Uh, started with uh, your post. We got you on here. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. There seems to be a major disconnect between uh, the price of Monero and what we see as the real world demand for it. Um, so how do we fight back? You know, what what should be done? What can be done to prevent this problem or to find out if what's going what we think is going on is really going on. What can we do to if ex stop exchanges from doing this if they are in fact doing this? What are some of the solutions? What are some of the actions we can take? All right, so first of all, again, I think that the current situation is that we it's like we have just discovered the problem and now we have to respond as a community. So I think again that the Monero community is extremely intelligent so I don't, I, I can't make propositions, but I do think that the best answers will come from the community, as a community, and all the people in the intelligence of the Monero community. But if I had to give some ideas, I know maybe we know that Binance, for instance, has acted against the interests of Monero holders behind the scenes, while Kraken uh, seems to be more, you know, transparent. So maybe we can, first of all, um, choose to uh, prefer Kraken rather than Binance and to let the world know, I mean, let the community know that it's better to use Kraken than Binance. We can make sure that every website that talks about Monero says not to use Binance to, to, to make this fact common knowledge because it's more and more common knowledge now, but maybe we can put this to another level where we truly uh, uh, like welcome and Kraken and say that balance is uh, is extremely bad for Monero. Then 
if we create maybe an institutional team or a team that will work behind the scenes uh, to defend Monero and to make sure that the interests of Monero holders are, are respected uh, on exchanges, I, I, maybe this is something that we could do. Uh, I don't know if uh, the core team can work on this, but yeah, I, I think right now we are in the phase of the discovery and from this discovery phase, we're going to enter the phase of uh, the response. And the response, I think, will come from the community. But yes, I, I will try to, 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 to be a part of this and to find solutions with the community to, to fight them back, you know, um, to free XMR from uh, this uh, uh, practice that are not, um, are not good practice, you know. Yeah, I mean, we, we could start to do that even on this show, right? So recommending if you're, you know, if you have to, if you're going to use an exchange, you know, don't don't opt for uh, Binance. Um, yes, but I've, if I can, if, excuse me, if I can add something. Sure. Uh, I, I also think that uh, they are going to suffer the consequences uh, of their actions because when, 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 um, when Monero will, will start to go up because they are trying to massively suppress the price with naked shorts. Uh, the ratio of uh, Monero naked shorts is extremely, extremely unbelievable. All right. Um, the ratio for, for, for Bitcoin, for instance, is like 80%. So we've got 80% uh, of the shorts on Bitcoin that are aged. But for Monero, it's like 0.001%. So means they're going they're trying all they can to suppress the price but when the, the price will start to go up i truly think that people will start to retrieve their money from exchanges and at this moment it will be harder for them to maintain their system so the main thing we can do and uh, i'm sorry not to have said this before but effectively the main thing we can do is to retrieve the money from binance and take, from exchanges take your, off, take your money off of exchanges yes this is what is going to help them the most and this is this is the main thing to do this is this right. is the thing to do actually you know it's, it's a good thing to do even if this wasn't happening right because then you're using monero correctly you're, you're holding that bearer asset um yes. you know we, we've seen uh the bitcoin community always put that that meme out there hold your own keys get it off of exchanges do you think people are listening in Monero and they're and they're doing that? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Unfortunately, I think there are still too much Monero on exchanges, and because of that, because what they, I think what we 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 suspect them from doing is that they use the Monero on exchanges that people let to short Monero. You know, mm -hmm. this is what we suspect. So. Unfortunately, there are too, ma too many people that let their money on exchanges. And now I think they, are, they have much more reasons not to let their money on exchanges because even if it's another crypto, you always want to own your crypto and you don't own it until it is on your own wallet. Mm -hmm. So when people right now are letting money on exchanges, this is very dangerous for them. Uh, especially for the people that count on that money and that let a lot of um, money on this exchange. Because let's say that they have 25% of real Monero and 75% of uh, paper Monero, all right? So it means three out of four person that think that do have Monero on Binance do not have it, you know? So when this crisis will explode, three out of four person will be empty of Monero uh, and this can lead to dramatic situations. And, you know, I, I truly think that we are in a situation right now if they truly don't have Monero and potentially this is the new Mongox, you know. Uh, potentially Binance is a new Mongox when it comes to Monero. And, yeah. And just, just to be clear, so, you know, do, do you think the intent is because they're suppressing, they're intentionally trying to suppress the price of Monero or just because they, they want to you know, make make money off of the exchange fees and they're just pretending that they have this Monero, they have paper Monero and they're allowing people to exchange it without actually having the Monero. What What is driving uh, Binance to do this? What's their 
how are they making money off of this? Why are they doing it? What's their goal? Yeah. So I think there are two, two different um, uh, parties that are attacking Monero right now. So Binance, when it comes to Binance, I think what they do is, is they just uh, sell uh, paper Monero, XML paper. So since there is a quantity of Monero they sell and they do not have, they make money on this. This is the first part. But when it comes to the shorts, I, I think also that they use the, the Monero that people let on this exchange to short Monero. So they make money when Monero goes down with by shorting Monero. And I also think that a lot there are potentially Bitcoin maximalists and potentially governments that are afraid of the rise of Monero that use these exchanges, especially Bitfinex, to short Monero. So these parties, when it comes to potentially Bitcoin maximalists and um, governments, uh, they short Monero evilly, but they do not have Monero. So they naked short Monero and they do it in a... Um, I mean, in the magnitude that is extremely uh, shocking. So they are evenly motivated and maybe potentially ready to lose money, and but they want money to go down. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, I tend to agree with you that it seems like somebody is actively trying to suppress the price, whether yes. that's, you know, governments or some, some, somebody else that has an incentive to do so. We, you know, it's it's anecdotal, but I I've been in this in this marketplace for quite some time. It sounds like you have as well. It's just the price of Monero just doesn't make sense. Versus, yeah, it just, it just doesn't <laughs> make sense. It's sitting at at twenty six. It, it does rank twenty six in coin market cap. You know, I understand people like the next new thing, but even so, it just does, the amount of pre buy pressure that's there for its yeah. real world usage. Um compared to any other coin it's it's just doesn't it doesn't add up it doesn't yes, add up. exactly it, it doesn't make any sense you know and you know it's some people will say yes it's easy well you're between uh mono maximalist so you think you know but no i mean just look at the facts you know uh, this is the only icon i mean for me mono is not even a nine coin i, I truly believe now monero right now has become and is becoming a new asset class and it is not an altcoin anymore and personally i do not treat monero as an altcoin anymore you know but i have a tendency to anticipate you know the tendencies and what is going on and i think that a lot of people are going and are going to do it more and more mm -hmm. but when it comes to the price yes i mean the situation of monero like it's not even the top 10, it's not even top 20. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But again, if you truly want to choose the right technology, sometimes you are ahead of your time. And what you want to take care about is not the current situation, but the fundamentals. And what I do personally is I, I try to imagine where smart people with high IQ will invest the money in the future. I don't think they will do it in a dog money. I don't think, you know, but private store value, private transactions, I think, yes, this is pretty much interesting, you know, and it's basic, Monero is basically doing what Bitcoin does, but with uh, privacy. So private store value, I, I truly think that this use case is going to be more and more necessary uh, in the coming years. And I know that a lot of uh, Bitcoin people uh, or used to talk about the 8 trillion market cap of the gold as a target. But the offshore market is 30 trillions. So potentially Monero um, is much bigger than Bitcoin, you know. So, yeah, just, you know, sometime, yeah, the current... I, I couldn't agree with you more, you know, and yeah. uh, obviously those of us that really understand the value proposition of cryptocurrency have ar have arrived at Monero and we realize what's at stake. We realize the exactly. direction that the world is moving in and you need a crypto that has these certain attributes for it to survive. Uh, and there's really only Monero. I mean, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is decentralized and it's got that going for it. It's robust in 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 its network effect, but it's it's lacking privacy. 
And uh, we exactly. all that, that's critical. And it doesn't appear to be able to fix that. It's, you know, it's the, it, it's too late. You know, the plane has already taken off from, it's already taken off. It's already flying and it, it can't exactly. you know, add, uh, you know, additional, additional uh, turbines, you know, it's, it's <laughs> lacking in, it, in its design. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we often talk about, you know, is Monero going to start to get delisted more? Is it going to start to get added to exchanges? Uh, that's something that people are always talking about. You know, part of me thinks it would be great if obviously if we see Monero on more exchanges, but will we continue to see this type of manipulation? Um, and is Monero delistings arguably in some ways a good thing, uh, forcing people in the Monero community to use it as intended? And then to start to use things like decentralized exchanges and atomic swaps, which we're seeing the advent of creating a more pure marketplace, right? That really uh, it's going to be more difficult to manipulate that in the way this is potentially being manipulated. Um, and then also allowing people to use Monero peer to peer uh, without anybody really being able to gain any additional heuristics on the users since they're now kind of in the off in the in the fringes using monero as they wish trading into it as they wish uh without going through these centralized authorities what's your take on that i mean do you want to see monero being listed on more exchanges are you okay with you know a trend where it starts to get potentially delisted more and we start to see more of this peer-to-peer -peer usage and things like atomic swaps. What's your thinking around around those ideas? Yeah, I think um, this is because they have been trying. I'm talking about the, the government. They have been trying uh, to fight Monero, and they have been trying to do it at the protocol level. But they are realizing that it's too hard and that they are not going to succeed. So effectively, the only uh, point of failure for Monero is exchanges. And they can apply pressure by trying to uh, ban Monero or to delist it. But we have seen in countries like Nigeria that when you ban a cryptocurrency or you remove it or you delist it, we have seen that it doesn't stop its usage, it increases its usage. It doesn't stop its demand. It increases its demand. So they can try to delist Monero, but I don't think it will stop Monero. The only thing that could stop Monero is to stop it at the protocol level. But at their own expense, they are realizing that it's not possible. You know, With the current technology and with the hard work of uh, the Monero community, it's not possible. So they are truly starting to fight Monero and I think they started uh, years ago, but this fight is going to become more and more intense until they realize that they cannot stop it and that they have to comply with it and they have to uh, see the future in a world where people have a way to uh, store v value privately and they have to cope with that, you know. Because I, I think for, for years now, for 50 years since uh, President Nixon um, uh, stop the gold, you know, uh, transfer. I mean, uh, since that date, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that the states have been in a position of uh, ubiquitous power and they, they, they've been in a position they could do everything they could, they wanted, and the citizens had no way to, to defend themselves, you know. They had to, 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 to suffer from this. And for the first time, this technology can give back freedom to people. And from this, I, I think... We will see uh, new, um, new positive things for the society. You know, uh, this is my take. I think they will try, they will fight, but um, eventually they will have to comply and uh, to to accept the existence of this uh, new um, of new technology. And again, I don't think this is bad. I don't think this is bad for the world. Um, I think this is a right for the people and. Um, again, you said it, we are ahead of our time to some extent, 
and we have to give the whole fungibility. And um, this is a new technology, and some people that do have power and that are in a position of power right now, they don't like it. They don't want people to have it. But let's fight and let's give it to the to the world and to the people, you know. And I think the Monero community is an elite community. And as an elite, in, uh, as an elite community, we do have some responsibilities. And, you know, to be strong and to fight and to, to remain when some people don't like what we are doing, I think this is a quality. And yes, we, we have to do the necessary to make sure that in the future, uh, people will be able to use a fungible cryptocurrency. What effect do you think atomic swaps, decentralized exchanges, things like ThorChain are going to have on the liquidity of Monero and the price of Monero? Do you have any thoughts there? Um, I, I think uh, right now it's too hard to use, so it doesn't have a real impact. But in the coming years, I think it's going to play a very important role and as the user experience is made easier and easier i think a lot of people are going to start to use it and we have seen for instance with um, ethereum that decentralized exchanges have um, their volume you know it went from nothing to something extremely high and i think potentially the same thing will happen with monero uh, we just maybe need time but uh, we do have time and i i, I think we do have also uh, the qualities and um, the people who are working on decentralized exchanges right now with uh, very interesting projects. So I, I do think that um, with time, these decentralized exchanges might become the main exchanges, and this would be great. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't trade. I don't use uh, centralized exchanges. I, you know, I, I just try to accumulate um, when I can. Um, get paid in Monero a little bit for, you know, we do the show, we get, we, we do our sponsorships, uh, but I, I don't trade, but for me, kind of the, the Holy grail would be, you know, when you could have, have your Monero, you're using it peer to peer. And when you want to, you can move it into perhaps something more stable at times. And you could do that in a decentralized trustless way without going through any central authority. Uh, obviously, eventually, perhaps you won't even need to do that. And once the market gets large enough, the market cap gets large enough, and you don't have to worry about the volatility as much. Um, but for me, that's that's something that I'm excited for and hoping we arrive at the day that you can hold your Monero, use your Monero, but then also easily, if need be, move some of that into something stable. Uh, and that's and do it in a way that's decentralized and trustless um, and go back and forth between, you know, your, your, your stable coin and your Monero. Do you think along those lines? Yes. Um, but I think, yes, yes, for the short to middle term. But I think in the long term, as Monero price rises, uh, I think eventually it will become stable and Hopefully we won't have to uh, make these transfers. But yes, for the middle to short, uh, short and middle term, effectively uh, money was going to be volatile. So yes, decentralized exchanges will be very useful to um, make this kind of transfers and to benefit from stable coins. And that's why I, I think uh, the fact that the Monero community started to work on this very soon before it's necessary is extremely smart and uh, very good. Do you think that's why a lot of people currently leave Monero on exchanges is for that reason? Because they're they're worried about the vault. They want to be able to get out of Monero, move out of Monero into other things uh, to, you know, to protect their, their value. Yes, I think this is the main reason because some people, you know, fear uh, a very uh, huge dump of Monero and at this moment, they want to be able to, to sell extremely fast. Um, I think, yeah, but it's a double-edged uh, technique, a method. And they have to be aware of the risk, which is that 
when um, Binance will not be able to meet its uh, demand and the fact that they are doing EV paper XMR uh, is beyond what they can handle at this moment, they might be empty of XMR. I mean, they might connect to Binance and this time it won't be a week, but it will be forever. And at this moment, they will have to um, to take the responsibility and to accept it because they took the risk and it will be at their own expense. So I, I truly think that it is not a good idea to do it. And between this risk and the risk of a potential dump, I choose a dump because the price of Monero is already at the bottom of the bottom and I don't see where it can go. I mean, this is... I, it doesn't make any sense for me, you know. Yeah, no, same it, here. I'd rather just hold, yeah. hold my Monero, you know. There's, there's, yeah. The risk yeah. isn't worth it to, to deal yeah. with exchanges. Yes. And even, even if the price dumps, I mean, it is not a good price already. So it's just going to go higher eventually, mm -hmm. you know. And the scarcity and all of that will lead the price much higher. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make any sense to let Monero on exchanges. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to deal with the tax implications implications of trading and uh and yeah. you know I'm, I'm and also i'm i'm just trying to be on the forefront of pushing us to the point where we can all just sorry about that it's a little, a little no problem. background no problem. where we could all just uh you know hold and use our monero on a daily basis the way it's meant to be used peer-to-peer -peer. so the, the only way that yeah. happens is if some of us actually just start doing that today uh and then you know, hopefully eventually that becomes more of a mainstream thing to do. Um, so it seems like we're, we're certainly moving in that direction. It's exciting to see these new technologies. Atomic swaps is, you know, it's not theoretical. It's real. It yeah. works. It's not user friendly yet, but we're, we're it appears, we appear to be moving in that direction as well to the point where, you know, it will be integrated in things like Cake Wallet and Samurai so it's 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 happening. Uh, yes, we're very exciting. Very exciting. Unfortunately, I think they were they were hacked recently, but the, you know I, I like their vision, and it looks like they're going to be a nice on ramp as well, on and off ramp for Monero to to other coins through through Thorchain. Oh, one thing uh, we didn't touch on. I have it on my notes. Is proof of funds right? Wasn't there some people talking? Yeah. About yes. 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 Yes that and get exchanges so as as another potential solution i guess forcing exchanges to adopt some kind of proof of funds protocol that will allow us to know whether or not they actually have the monero that they say they have yes exactly so i think it would be a possibility for if uh, monero has um so a team that works with institutions and exchanges to demand from exchanges that they apply this protocol. So this protocol is called the improve uh, protocol. And it says that it can make sure that we have a proof of servancy at one moment from exchanges. You know, so with this protocol, exchanges can prove that they do have a certain amount of Monero at that time. And we, as a community, I, I truly think that we could demand this from exchanges. And if some exchanges refuse to do this, then the community has to avoid them and not to use them, you know, because we should benefit from this if the technology make it possible. Um, yeah, so it is an improved protocol, and I think it was um, created in 2018. And um, yes, yeah, there is a, a document that describes this protocol and what it does and how it proposes to um, to, to force exchanges to. Uh, to, to prove that they do have a certain amount of money. Are there any legitimate reasons why an exchange may not want to do it? Obviously, they, they may not want to do it if they don't want to expose that they actually don't have the funds, but yeah. are there legitimate reasons other than, I guess, the work involved with adding it? No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see any reason why they will refuse. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if they refuse, it's maybe because their reserves or lower than what they want us to believe. I think this is the only reason why they would refuse. But other than this, I don't see it. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see somebody like a Kraken be the first one to do it since it seems like they 
they are legitimate, right? So yes, that would just add to their brand, showing that they're 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 trustworthy and they're willing to do it. Uh, and then that would put pressure, like you said, on these other exchanges to do yes. the same or to risk losing uh, volume from Monero traders. Yes. And Kraken has been, I think, more transparent than any other exchange when it comes to Monero. And I feel like Monero can be an opportunity for Kraken uh, because they can, again, I, I truly think that Monero is not an altcoin and uh, Kraken has been in crypto for some time. So they do realize it, I think. And for them, it can really be an advantage to take an advantage over Binance. Uh, because Binance will be left with uh, all its um, shitcoin if we can talk, talk uh, like it is. Uh, although Kraken will be with uh, Monero and they will implement this protocol, prove that they do have reserves, while other exchanges that do not have Moneros will be forced to either implement this protocol or to let Monero along, you know. But I truly think that, yes, Kraken and maybe other exchanges can play um, a, a very big part in this. And let's see how it, how it goes, but uh, that would be great. I have also my notes, uh, DV chain. I, don't, I know you mentioned that in your Reddit, yes. Reddit post. So we're, we're talking about Binance, but what role does DV chain play in the ecosystem? So DV chain is a liquidity provider and from my research, it is the biggest liquidity provider of Monero in the world. And so their role is to make sure that there is a market. So um, when someone wants to buy Monero, for instance, maybe there is not a person in front of him or her in the platform to sell Monero. So it would be impossible for, for this person to buy at this moment because there is nobody at this moment to sell. So in order to do that, you need an intermediary. And this is what we call a liquidity provider. So the liquidity providers, they offer liquidity to exchanges. So they do have a certain amount of uh, Monero and they are an intermediate. And so when you buy and when you sell, most of the time you buy and you sell from them. And the fact is exchanges, um, a lot of times they use liquidity providers, especially in markets with uh, low liquidity. And so DV chain is uh, an important actor for the Monero ecosystem. And a lot of exchanges that are empty of Monero right now are trying to uh, use the services of uh, DV chain. And I, I let uh, DV chain know about the situation. So they, they know what's going on. And uh, I, I still think that uh, to some extent, they knew um, about the situation. Um, uh, I mean, before I, I send them the, the information, but at least now we are sure that the, they know about what's going on. And um, hopefully they're not going to help Binance and other exchanges to maintain the system because as a liquidity provider, it means that they do have a lot of this asset. And it is pretty clear that they would benefit much more from the appreciation of this asset mm -hmm. than any service of a liquidity provider. I mean, um, right. it doesn't make yeah. right. the incentive to want uh, these exchanges to not be pulling these shenanigans, right? Because then the price of Monero goes up and they're, they're large holders of, of Monero. Yes, you know. So, but what's the idea? The idea being that they can put pressure on the exchanges as well, or what, what role can they play to help uh, fix the ecosystem? Um, actually, um, when it comes to this, uh, I don't have, uh, um, I mean, because as far as I know, DV chain, so they offer services for Monero, for instance, but they also offer services for other tokens. So maybe in the situation of Monero, they have leverage, you know, they are in the position of force, but maybe for other tokens, they are not in this position and they want to keep the market, these other tokens. So maybe they are all, all stage behind the scenes. I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. This is a possibility that they are forced to do it, even if they, they would not 
like to do it, but if they want to maintain their, their place for other markets, they, they have to accept this. I don't know what is exactly going on behind the scenes, but what I would tell, tell them is that if they are holding a huge amount of money, potentially they are holding a huge amount of uh, incredible asset that is not an altcoin and that they should not consider as an altcoin anymore. And the price appreciation of this asset will benefit from them, I think, much more than any liquidity provider service they can offer, even if, if it, it is for other tokens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I believe Justin from the Monero community actually used to work for them. Um, I'll yeah, <laughs> I, I saw that in my researches, exactly, yes. I, I don't know much about them. I know, I think, uh, Change, Change Now obviously was talking about them when we had them on the show. But yeah, I should try. I should just try to do a show with uh, with DV Chain and try to learn more about that. Seems like a, a direction we should head in on, on Monero. Yes. All right, man. This is this was great. So you know, my takeaway <laughs> here is that we're gonna do more work on our end to always reiterate that message to people. You know, take take your Monero off exchanges. I think what happens is. We kind of forget that we need to say that because you just assume that's that's just a thing that everybody already knows. But I don't think there's any harm in drilling that into the Monero community all the time and making that part of our ethos that, you know, the right way to use Monero is is off exchange, taking it off exchanges and holding your own keys. So we'll we'll continue to repeat that meme and do our part in trying to get the information out there. And like you said, essentially warn people against using some of these exchanges that really do appear to be doing something inappropriate and not not having the funds to to back up their their trades so uh thank you for pushing us in that direction i think that that's the, the positive that's at least one positive that will come of this conversation one actionable thing we can do right away we'll start to do that more on this show and on Monerotopia, always talking about it. Um, beyond that, where can people, I guess, reach out to you that are interested in helping you in this pursuit? Because it does sound like you're very interested in this. Uh, obviously, you, you're you you're studying it, you're following it. So maybe people can reach out to you and you can talk to other people and maybe come, um, come up with additional ways that the community can try to push these initiatives forward. Where can they find you? Where can people learn about you? Um, I mean, I'm not pretty active on, uh, on the social networks um, uh, because for me, again, I'm a member of uh, the Monero community and I will truly act uh, in, when it comes to this crisis just as a member of the Monero community. So, yes, I mean, they can uh, have a, um, a Twitter account, but I'm, uh, I mean, I'm, I don't have a lot of followers. And, uh, but yes, my Twitter account is uh, what Kevin. W A G uh, Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, they can follow me there. But uh, maybe I will, because I have also another project. Uh, I'm going to uh, to to work more and more on this other project. And um, yes, but this is I think the other use case for cryptocurrency uh, than Monero. And I have this other project. And maybe I will open a YouTube channel for this project. So when I, if I do it, they, they will be able to find me on the Kevin Wad. And uh, this will be the name of my channel. And uh, yes, that's, uh, that's it, you know, because, yeah, for me, there are three main case, use cases in cryptocurrency. And uh, so um, I see a future with three main cryptocurrencies. So the first one would be, um, I mean, the two first ones would be Bitcoin and Monero. So uh, a transparent cryptocurrency, a private cryptocurrency, maybe the private cryptocurrency will become the main cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. But if you do have this, the, um, I mean, the only drawback that you have is that you have an uncertainty on the supply. So you want a bucket system, you know, and I see potentially, um, if you want a bucket system, then having a transparent network that operates, you know, is a possibility. So maybe Bitcoin will become a kind of backup system in the event 
that uh, there is a problem with the supply of Monero. Mm -hmm. And at this moment, you people will be able to transfer their, 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 their money into a transparent system uh, where um, the supply is, uh, is, um, is auditable and fixed, all of that. But yes, for me, the future will be uh, Bitcoin Monero. And I see another possibility, another use case for cryptocurrency, which is open source medical research without intellectual property. And this is uh, the project I'm working on. It's called Etika Protocol. And um, I, I think this will be the main use case for cryptocurrency in the coming years. So yeah, this is my, 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 my three main focus. And uh, yes, that, that's it. Well, let, let's, you know, let's get into that just a little bit. We'll, we'll wrap yeah. it up, but let's get into just so the, you know, the audience understands a little bit more about what you're working on. I, I, I want to give you the platform to talk about it. So tell us more about that concept. Yeah. So basically, you know, so right now people a lot talking about DeFi, which is decentralized finance. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think this is useless. And I, I think that decentralized science, DeSci, I would call it is much more promising for the future. Um, I think we do have the possibility with blockchain to create a new system, a completely new system, a complete new organization in the way we organize uh, medical research. Um, and we can make open source medical research a reality thanks to blockchain. We can create a, a protocol that will incentivize decentralized communities and organizations to take part in a way of um, researching together. And right now the medical research system is organized um, with the idea of intellectual property. So you have private institutions that do work in competition. So you have a lot of problem like the web production of work. So they are working on the same issue. They are doing and spending money doing the same things, but they do not share the results. And the, it is the first team that find the results that get uh, the intellectual property. And then they monetize this intellectual property. And this is a way they finance um, all the, the money that they had to spend. But with blockchain, we can make sure that there are decentralized organizations that share the results all along the process of uh, the research. And I think it's going to lead to much quicker results and also much faster results because decentralized communities can be extremely uh, much more efficient. Uh, if you take, for instance, the average price to develop one medicine is one to two billion dollars. And beyond these huge numbers, you uh, very usually have small teams of 15, 10 people working actually on the project. A uh, lot of uh, the spending are done in marketing or in fundraising. But uh, the, the very research, a very, a very tiny amount of uh, this uh, money is spent actually on research and the teams are actually small. And yes, I, I truly think that this is the next, next big thing for cryptocurrency and that we will see in the coming years a protocol to organize medical research without intellectual property and that this protocol will, I think, be a huge thing potentially. And when I when I, I I keep studying Ethereum and Cardano, because I I, I see these um, these projects as technically just I mean a lot of people are talking about this project and they all they do is DeFi decentralized finance but it's, it is useless. But as a, a programmer, I've used uh, Ethereum to I mean I've made the white paper and I made the protocol. I've coded the protocol. So the content is all of this, uh, it's, uh, it's ready. And I, I see Ethereum as a mean to achieve this uh, use case of uh, decentralized uh, open source medical research. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, I, I don't see the use case for Ethereum and other uh, projects like this, but specifically for this use case, having an Ethereum is extremely valuable. And that's why uh, I, I kept uh, studying Ethereum and I've uh, made this protocol. Hmm. Interesting, Matt. So do you, do you have a background in this area as well? This, you know, uh, you know, 
scientific research area? What, what's, um, what, why are you trying to solve that particular problem? Well, utilizing uh, essentially the development of things like pharmaceuticals, right? Yes. Um, I don't have a specific background on, on this, mm -hmm. but um, I've identified this project. Uh, I mean, uh, this problem is also because there is a problem for malaria, for instance, which is uh, a disease that is more spread in the south of the world. And there is a project which is called Open Source Malaria. So it's uh, some researchers that are trying to find a medicine for malaria in an open source way. But I've identified that the way they do it, there is no real incentivize because um, they don't have a lot of investment from their part. And I, I see that if there is um, a blockchain project with an economic incentive to do it, Mm -hmm. They would work much more on this, and it will lead to much more than this. But beyond this, uh, there is also the possibility to work on um, life expense and the fact that um, there is a, a researcher which is called David Sinclair. So this researcher is working on a way to stop aging and to potentially uh, change the process of aging. So he has been working on this alone, but he has made some breakthrough alone. And I imagine what would happen if he was not working alone on this, but like thousands of people were working with him. Mm -hmm. But why there are not thousands of, of people working with him in this direction? Because there is no economic incentive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with blockchain, we can create this economic incentive to participate in a decentralized way and yes, I, I truly think that beyond this, there are also a lot of other diseases where the research could be much more valuable if there were more people. You know, sometimes people, when they are sick, they have a disease, they organize in communities online. But I also see, I also saw that they were passive. You know, they were waiting for a solution from the private market. But what if these people could gathered because they are very knowledgeable about the disease. They find information on the internet. So what if these people could, beyond just waiting, actively take part in the process to find the solution to their problem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting stuff, man. I think, you know, I, I initial reaction, I guess, like pharmaceutical companies would, would say, well, you know, we need intellectual property. We need patents because uh, we want to we want to own monopolies ultimately on our creations. And that's what gives us the incentive to put so much money up front. Uh, it was the idea that on the back end will be heavily rewarded or even with the wind, exactly. the monopoly. And that's why they have the incentive to do it. So what? How how is that incentive then replaced? Right, they 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 want that monopoly. Uh, that's what's driving them to develop these pharmaceutical pharmaceuticals. So how how is that being? Re I'm not following how that gets replaced in a decentralized way. What what is then the the driver there? Yes. So in the uh, in the HCAR protocol. So they are decentralized communities that, I mean, it's a Nash equilibrium mm -hmm. and it's a voting system. And uh, this protocol incentivizes people to share the results along the process and they are rewarded along the process by the, the neutral protocol. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's a set of uh, rules that makes it possible to uh, have another incentive than intellectual property. And that's, that is why it's extremely different from, uh, as you said, the, the current system of the industry. And I, I think that we, in, in the future, we can imagine a system where there are two uh, systems that work uh, in, uh, in parallel. So they, they can maintain what they are doing. But uh, next to this, we can, I mean, from the society, from the people, we can create a system of decentralized communities that would work on these issues that they're working on. And potentially this new system can become 
a source of ideas and a source of uh, for them. You know, I, I think the, the two systems can be extremely complementary, but a system with that intellectual property as an incentive is possible. And this is uh, what I'm, I made in the white paper and what I, I've coded. And now I, I know that it's possible. And uh, in the coming years, I will focus on this. Interesting. Man. I, I got to think about it more. You know, I wasn't uh, <laughs> expecting to talk about this. So it's very interesting. Um, so yeah, where can, where can people then learn more about that as well if they're interested in following yeah. those Yeah, things? so the project is named Etika Protocol. So it's the E-T-I-C-A protocol.org. They can see um, the white paper and they can see also uh, the code is on GitHub. So they can see the open source code on, on GitHub. Uh, on the F it, uh, I, may, I have implemented this protocol on the Ethereum blockchain. And um, maybe in the future, uh, it will be also implemented on Cardano blockchain. I don't know, but the idea um, is yes, to, to develop this project in the coming years. Uh, I started this project in 2018, but then I, I stopped uh, because um, I was involved uh, in uh, other um, things like uh, Monero and all this. But I, I know that this project has huge potential and um, all the people I've talked about it, about this project, they, they tell me, why did you put this in the side all this? But I know uh, that, uh, yes, in the coming years, I'm going to focus on this, yes. Yeah, it's a big undertaking. All right, mm -hmm. good luck. Um, thanks Thank again you. for coming on. I'm, I'm glad we, we found you on Reddit through that post. We like just, you know, getting on guests that, you know, uh, I, we, we don't like talking about the same things all the time on this show. And we, we it's, it's sometimes hard not to do that. Uh, we're, we're so focused on, um, you know, the, the fungibility aspects of Monero and it, it's nice to get, uh, new guests throughout the community. So yeah, putting the word out there too. anybody, you know, that tunes into Monero talk that would ever want to come on for a kind of a deep dive. Obviously we have Monero Topia as well, where anybody's at any welcome anytime to, to jump on the stage there. But if anybody ever wants to deep dive on a subject, come on, and you think you, you have some knowledge to share with the Monero community, please, please do reach out to us. We'd love to have you on. So, Kevin, thanks again, man. Uh, thank you very much, Douglas. And yes, a very huge pleasure to, to, to meet you and talk with you. Yes. All right. Have a good day. Yeah, Cheers. you too. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.